Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Sensei Steve Says, hosted by Shaggy Do Martial Arts. Today we're going to be talking about a topic which is very important, which is learning how to punch properly. Um, basically, the importance of punching properly is so that you don't break your hand, you don't break your wrist, uh, you don't cause damage to yourself otherwise. Uh, I'm going to give you a couple of tips on how to keep that uh, in a good spot for you, and we're going to go from there. So, uh, in Ishinru, we punch with a vertical punch, but in uh, some styles they do corkscrew punches, other ones will do uh, a hooking punch and stuff like that. Um, but especially for Ishinru punches, the point of contact, the thing that you're actually hitting with, are going to be your top two knuckles. Now in boxing that tends to be your middle two knuckles. I personally don't like that because your ring finger um, knuckle is not going to be as strong uh, as your pointer finger and your uh, your middle finger. So your index finger and your middle finger, they just tend to have stronger bones associated with them. You are These are stronger fingers than these two. So using them uh, as your primary point of contact is going to be more beneficial uh, on a punch in my opinion. Now, it's an opinion, I could be wrong. There's a lot of styles out there that specialize in doing things differently uh, to each their own, but I'm gonna teach you how to do it uh, the way that I was taught, the way that I learned, and the way that works for me. So when I'm doing my punch, the couple things that I wanna pay attention to is I want the knuckles on my hand to line up straight with the two bones in my forearm all the way down to my elbow, okay? If I have my thumb cocked back too far so that my wrist is flat on the bottom, My, what's gonna happen is this force is gonna come in from punching something and it's gonna stop in my wrist, okay? So that force is going to get caught up in the bones of the wrist and that's gonna re, uh, be where you cause damage to your wrist. If you cock it down too far, you run into the same exact thing. First, you're punching your with your top knuckle at a, at a kind of a bad spot and also all that force is still gonna get caught up in your wrist and you're gonna do damage to your wrist. Wrists and ankles are very complicated joints. There's a lot of moving parts, a lot of moving bones. Um, and you know there's a high chance of getting injured in that area. So you wanna kinda of uh, hedge your bets, pad your odds, whatever, however you wanna put it, uh, and make this as straight as possible. So when I do it, I wanna make sure that my from my uh, top two knuckles all the way back is a nice straight line. Now that extends to, uh, on the top and bottom, if I look, what I don't want is my wrist cocked one side or the other, okay? I wanna make sure that that's nice and straight and then it lines up with my bones. Also, if I look at my fist itself, I'm not hitting with these knuckles here, I'm hitting with these back ones here. This is gonna cause a lot of uh, leverage to be in a bad spot and it's gonna cause these knuckles to to uh, extend in such a way that they're not designed, potentially stre uh, stretching and damaging and whatever, the tendons that control my fingers. What I wanna do is hit with just these top two knuckles here. So I'm gonna, when I punch, I'm gonna punch at just a slight bit of an angle so that the only things that are hitting are these top two knuckles in the back, okay? So when I'm looking at my wrist to see if I'm punching straight, if I look down, I shouldn't see any ridges or fold lines caused by uh, my my wrist being brought back too far, and I should be able to see my knuckles. I shouldn't be able, if I tilt down like this, I can't see my top two knuckles uh, when I'm looking at it from the bank. If I bring it here, I can see my top knuckle. So that'll get me close. In terms of side to side, um, getting this side to side, if I go too far to the back, I'm definitely gonna see it, but that one's pretty easy to see. You just want it to be a nice straight line. Um, up the center of your arm. If your arm's like mine, where you got a little bit of, of forearm muscle here, it's not gonna be symmetrical. Uh, the inside and the outside of your arms are made up of different muscles, so it's not gonna be a symmetrical shape, but you will have bones that run up through the middle of it. So that'll help you line up what you need to. So when I'm doing those punches, I'm basically just looking for uh, the creases and such like that. Even if I'm doing my, if I'm doing a twist punch, all of those wrist placement things are going to be the exact same spot. Um, so in Ishinru, in uh, Sanchin Kata, the we kept the corkscrew punches. So when we do the corkscrew punch, I want the same thing. Now I'm going to have my fist tilted just a little bit forward, so that I can hit with just my top two knuckles. But I don't want it tilted so far that there's a bend in my wrist. I want to keep it 
I want to basically punch my whole arm down to get that angle, not my wrist. The other thing when I'm doing that is I want to look and see that my wrist is straight this way and my wrist, my uh, knuckles line up with my forearm this way. Okay, so when I'm doing my punch here. Uh, great ways to practice that, do it in the air. Um, also, if I've got my, uh, if I've got a heavy bag or honestly, uh, a door frame or a wall or something that's hard what i'm going to want to do is just set my fist against it so i'm putting my punch out there and just setting my fist against it i'm not telling you to punch holes in your wall i'm not telling you to break your hand punching something too hard right i'm just saying set your hand against it and look to see where your point of contact is and see where that puts your wrist okay so you're just going to set it there set it there and continue, right? And as you do it slow, you build that muscle memory. You start slow, you move your way up. Now, uh, a great example of this is called the Makawara. Makawara is a traditional Okinawan training tool. Basically what it is, is it's a post, uh, either stuck on the ground or in a holder, that's wrapped with jute twine or nothing, um, that you go and you punch and you're gonna strike it. And basically what happens is it, bends back and then slaps your knuckles again. So you're hit, you, it hits you twice for every punch. So you punch it and it, back, it bounces off and comes back and hits it. Um, that's going to condition your knuckles really quickly. Um, but if you're not used to that kind of conditioning, you're gonna cut your knuckles up really good. And if you have really cut up knuckles, the chances of you going back out and practicing are low. And if you wait till that heals, it's gonna take a week or two and you're gonna lose everything you had before. So my suggestion is not to let it get that to that point. Um, what I personally do is when I work with a Makawara or walk, when I'm working with something hard, not necessarily a heavy bag, um, but even a heavy bag too, if you have a, a canvas heavy bag that's gonna do some damage to your knuckles um, with, with a lot of time spent on it, I'll throw my punches until I start to feel that blister feel. Everybody knows what that feels like. It's, it's the, I'm about to get a blister here uh, and your knuckles will turn real red, your skin will do some weird stuff. And it's not quite a blister yet and it's definitely not a rip yet. Um, then what I do is I stop, I wrap my hands with a, like a punching hand wrap and then I might keep going a little while or I might just stop for the day. It depends on how, uh, how long it takes to actually get to that point. Um, you let that heal, that only takes a day to heal. Uh, and if you keep going until that point, you start to build calluses on your knuckles so that you can throw those punches and you're not doing damage to your hands. Um, you can do that, I mean, that's as simple as just hitting this heavy bag. This is a vinyl heavy bag. The chances of me getting these blisters on this uh, are low, but if I sit here for an hour just throwing punches, nothing super hard, just making sure that I've got good wrist placement every time I'm throwing my punch, uh, eventually I will get to that point um, and then when, if I switch, uh, before I get injured, right, right at the cusp of that injury, I will be able to heal from it very quickly, like by the next day, kind of quickly. And I will still be building calluses. I'm pushing myself further and further because it'll take longer and longer to get to that point. Uh, another great thing to practice with, to get a good push up, or I'm sorry, a good punching position is your push-ups, right? If I do knuckle push-ups, push-ups on my top two knuckles, I have control over where I'm putting the weight on my knuckles. If I'm putting my hand nice and square, I can do um, these push-ups. And when I come up, I should only see like the red spots because I'm putting pressure on on my top two knuckles. So that'll help uh, give you another tool to check to make sure that you're punching with the right thing. All right, so when I'm doing push-ups with my knuckles, what I really want to do is one of two things. I either want my hands directly under my shoulders so that I'm punching here with good push-up form, or I want my punches to come at my solar plex. Obviously, that's a lot more difficult um, in terms of being a push-up, but you want to do these so that it's more akin to a punch. So if I were doing these on the floor, right, I want to make sure that the only parts on my on my hands that look like they 
had any kind of contact with the ground are going to be my top two knuckles. Okay. Again, that's something you work up to. You start slow. If you got to do them on your knees first because your wrists are doing, you know, these floppy things, do it that way. If you got to do it on a pad, uh, my suggestion also from experience is if you use puzzle mats or piano mats, like the folding kinds um, or anything like that, you probably don't want to put your fist on those because that's going to make your wrists do all these kinds of weird stability things. That's great for after you've started building that strength in your wrist, but if you're trying to do it for the first couple times, the chances of you letting it shake too far and bending your wrist and hyperextending something is quite high. So I would start with on the floor, uh, maybe like a yoga mat, just to give you some kind of padding, uh, but not so much that you're trying to compensate and around it the whole time. The last thing I'm gonna talk about here is just thumb placement. So in Ishinru, uh, when we do our thumb, it's always on top, okay? What I want it to be is pulled back so that it's behind my knuckles, right? But I want it sitting on top of my fist like this. Um, this works pretty well for me, especially um, in the, you know, the sparring that I've done, the, the contact sparring, the fights, etc. cetera. Um, especially doing straight punches, doing other punches, they, it keeps your thumb out of the way. Now, what I have noticed is if you're trying to go for a lower, uh, like a hook punch, you generally want to take your thumb and put it down here. Now, the reason Ishinru designed the thumb on top punch is because of the way that it moves the tendons of your thumb to support your wrist, okay? So my thumb on top actually supports my wrist placement. It works great for straight punching. If I'm trying to do a hook punch, however, that direction with my thumb stability isn't necessary for that punch. I like putting it on the side because the chances of me catching my thumb on somebody's elbow as they're dropping it down here is a little bit lower. Uh, trust me, I've torn the ligaments in my thumbs. Uh, it's unpleasant. I learned that lesson the hard way. So uh, take it from me that if you're trying to punch under somebody's elbow, especially with like a, a lower hook punch or something to that effect, tucking that thumb to the bottom is probably gonna be your best bet because if you take a shot on the top of your thumb this way, um, it's going to hyperextend uh, motion this way and uh, that is where you start doing damage to your ligaments because you have one that stretches to either side of your thumb knuckle here uh, and if you hyperextend that, the chances of you uh, straining or tearing one of those two is really high and that takes forever to heal um, you know like months of non-use so you have to be real careful with that kind of stuff um, with that my suggestion to you guys is practice 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 do those punches on a bag do those punches setting onto a hard surface again not striking the hard surface just setting it there making sure getting that muscle memory we're talking you know try to count out 500 punches one two, three. Is that gonna take a half hour? Yes, it is. But what that's gonna turn into is you being able to throw a punch at full power, striking something hard, and not have any concern over your wrist placement in the heat of the moment, okay? Obviously, uh, perfect form breeds perfect results, but fights are sloppy. Um, so, you know, you try to get as close as you can. Are you possibly gonna tweak your wrist when you're doing a punch in a fight? Yes. It happens, right? But the stronger you can get your wrists to re to resist that kind of side to side or floppy um, action while you're actually putting force behind it, the better chance you stand of coming unscathed in terms of um, damage to your arm from throwing a punch. Now, last thing I'd like to key in on is young people, and by young people, I mean, uh, if you're still going through growth spurts, you should not be punching anything with your knuckles. Uh, your wrists are still growing. You have growth plates on all of those bones in your hands, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, the chances of you damaging one of those growth plates is really high. Now, that doesn't mean you can't practice getting cracked wrist placement, making your wrists stronger. It means that you have to be very intelligent about it and that you shouldn't do it without the uh, help of somebody who has experience in working with kids and that kind of stuff. If you start throwing punches as hard as you can, you can stunt the growth of your hands um, and you can stunt the growth in your wrists 
and that'll lead to other problems down the line, whether that's uh, decreased cartilage or arthritis or um, you know tendon issues or bone issues or whatever. You can lead to all of those at a very young age by putting too much force on things that shouldn't have force applied to them yet. Now, once you've done, you, once you're done with your growth spurts, usually uh, 15, 16 years old, you want to start putting some power behind it, developing your wrists. Great. If you're younger, my suggestion is doing things like cherry pickers to build your wrist strength. Um, that builds your hand strength too, but it's going to do some stuff for your wrists. Um, doing, we call them door knockers, um, where either you do them with a, a small weight or a kettlebell. I don't know if I've got a, a kettlebell here. Basically, all I'm doing is making a motion like I'm knocking on a door. All right, that's why we call it door knockers. So you just come and you're basically doing these. You can do that with a bar if you've got one. Um, you know, however you want to do that. That'll strengthen your wrist for later without putting any of that force on there that'll cause the damage. Okay, so you can build your wrist strength. You just have to be careful about it. You want to be careful how much force you're putting behind things. And that goes for everything, kicks, punches, etc. You really shouldn't be doing full contact stuff younger than uh, when you stop growing because you can cause real damage to yourself. All right, uh, take it from me. I've been doing this forever and a half. I'm uh, 30 years old and I'm starting to feel the effects of some of the stuff I did when I was young uh, already. So my goal is to mitigate that going forward but without sacrificing any of my uh, my training. So just keep that in mind, it's very important. Um, and with that, that's what I got for you guys. Check the announcements, um, kids from the karate school, um, make sure you guys are tied into the Zoom class, the COVID classes, and the 30 and 30 challenge. If you are a YouTube consumer, make sure you guys like, subscribe, and hit that bell so that you get notified when we put our stuff out. All right, with that, you guys are awesome. Keep on getting after it. You guys are dismissed.